Well, Teresa had six pregnancies. It seemed I only had to take my socks off and she fell pregnant. So, um, in spite of whatever precautions we attempted. Right. Um, two of the children made it through and they're now in their 40s in this embodied state. Uh, the other four uh, didn't make it through, although one of them has reincarnated since, uh, about 16 years ago. Um, but the other three are still in spirit. But back in uh, the early 80s, when we were living in Wiltshire, uh, Therese and I were settling down to sleep one night, put the light out, and uh, suddenly I was jolted by the awareness that there were four children standing at the foot of our bed. A boy of about 12, uh, a girl of about uh, 9 or 10, uh, a boy a year or so younger, and then a, a girl a year or so younger than that, about seven. And um, it startled me quite a lot, but I wasn't fearful. There was no yeah. anxiety there. Yeah. I knew intuitively who they were. Right. And Peter, who is our oldest son, who didn't make it through, he miscarried. He was a stillbirth. Okay. Um, and uh, he grew up in spirit. Uh, he's, he would be, in earthly terms, in about 43 years old now. Mm. We've had awareness of him all throughout um, and uh, seen him growing up. Uh, he, and they came to us, all four of them, and explained that even though they are not embodied, they are with us, they love us, they are our children, then only as far away as our next thought of them. As soon as we turn our thought to them, mm. they're there with us. And that's true of wow. any, any of our loved ones who've gone before us and laid aside their body and are in the spirit realms. Uh, they all love us. They all wish to be uh, uh, known to us. They wish us to uh, understand their loving presence with us and that they're there to help us mm -hmm. and uh, Lord knows we can stand a little help Gosh. here on planet yeah, earth yeah. we're making so many mistakes and um, they have a little more awareness of a greater reality than we they have access to more information than we do and so they're ever with us um, even souls that didn't make it through into an embodied state like our four offspring um, who didn't uh, make it through to term. Uh, they are still souls who've mm -hmm. taken on this contact with us yes. for a purpose. Sure. And uh, the lack of awareness of that is uh, an unnecessary uh, self-deprival of some much greater, more joyful awareness of, of reality. Mm -hmm. um, we have an extended family. We all have an extended family in spirit, uh, some people say as much as 200 or more, mm. and beyond that, a more loosely dispersed extended family that runs into the thousands. Mm -hmm. Well, I've had awareness of uh, scores, hundreds even, of our loved ones in spirit. Mm. I'm in communion with my parents, for example, yeah. who uh, came to the end of their sojourn in time in the 1990s and I commune with them or talk to them uh, and have wonderful, joyful fellowship with them every day. Wow. And why not? Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as death. This veil between us and the spirit world is something we've made up. Yeah. It isn't really there. Mm. God didn't pull the blind down on us, we pulled it down on ourselves. You know, when I read this, I thought this has amazing implications because think of it this way. If, let's say, that a woman terminates her pregnancy, right? Guilt. Uh, yeah, exactly. The, the guilt and, and maybe the harsh feelings that may come up. Mm -hmm. If she knew that she could actually still have a relationship with that child, how would the guilt be, you know? I mean, isn't that... Isn't that the converse of what you were saying earlier? Well, Teresa had to have one of our um, children that didn't make it through 
uh, had to have a termination because her health was in such bad shape at that right. time that um, the doctor said, it's you or the baby. And because you've already got two children, you've got to stick around mm. to look after them. Um, so we've got no choice. Mm. If you see this child through to term, it'll be the finish of you. Mm. So she had a termination. And when she went to the hospital to do this, the doctor who was doing it said to her, oh, you're the one who wants to murder your child, are you? Oh, really? Yes, yes. and he labelled her a child murderer. Oh, dear. And you can imagine the guilt oh. that uh, that heaped on Teresa. But blessedly, because she was aware of our loved one's uh, offspring in spirit and that there's no such thing as death, um, we are immortal. The body can't even die because it's only a little pile of clay that we've chosen to animate for a span. And the soul is eternal, so it certainly can't die. It was never born, mm. so it certainly can't die. So there's no such thing as death. Mm. Jesus told us this 2,000 mm. years ago. Mm. We've chosen to ignore yes, it. Yes, yes. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I suppose, though, people watching this, Brian, might be saying, well, yes, it's all very well for Brian to say this, but, you know, you clearly have the ability, and I know ability may not be the right word, to connect with the spirit world in, in a very sort of direct way, if I can put it that way. Yes. But most people don't. And, 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 and if we can leave aside the reasons for that for the moment, yes. because obviously we could go into that. But is there anything that you could say to people watching this in terms of how they might, you know, be able to, let's say, in the situation that we've described, yes. where there has been a lost child or something yes. like that, where they, where they can begin to make a connection, if they choose, of course. Yes. Um, this is all about conditioning. Um, our parents, your parents and mine, and their parents and their parents before them, were told the story about time and place. This is reality. Deal with it. <laughs> uh, so we grow up believing that all this is real, that we're going to grow up, we're going to learn certain things, we're going to get old, we're going to get sick, we're going to get frail, and then we're going to die. Yeah. And that's the story that we all believe as we're growing up. And part of that story is that that alone is real, in a sense, yes, and the spirit world is not yes, real. That's, okay, so, yeah. This is the reality, yeah. you're going to die. Yeah. The possibility, maybe, if we're lucky, is that there's something called eternity. Well, that story is completely about things. Right. Eternity is reality, time and place is illusion. So we, we're conditioned into believing. But how do we overcome that? I mean, it's no good okay. someone saying, well, okay, I'm conditioned. How do I decondition, if you like, in that context? It's all about belief. Okay. Uh, the reason why I have been blessed with this awareness of the spirit world and of Jesus and the kingdom of heaven here in the midst, within, the kingdom of God is within, mm. uh, is because I have been willing to believe. Mm. I was ready to accept. This made absolute sense to me. Now most people, sadly, don't believe. They're doubtful. Doubt well, they don't believe in things like life after death, you yes, mean, and that they can right. have a communication with a yeah. child who wasn't born. That's right. right. They're uncertain. There's doubt. There's uncertainty. I always say doubt is the great dismantler of faith. Mm. And without faith and a willingness to believe, mm. then we can't believe. And the blind or veil that we put down over our sight is the veil of unbelief. Mm. The label on that veil is unbelief. If we are willing to lift that shutter, that blind, called unbelief, and allow belief to come in, we are then open mm. to a greater reality that most humans have no awareness of during their embodied state. And that is available to us all. It is All it requires is a little willingness to believe that we are eternal. And for you, am I right in saying this, Brian, did this come about, as you said earlier, because you have this, if you like, burning desire to to meet Jesus in, oh, in a yeah. sense. Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, your, you might say your prayers were answered. Definitely. Um, and from there, having made the connection with, as you call him, the head honcho, the spirit <laughs> world, you might say, then it was obviously 
you were already part of that world. Is that how it happened, or you we're, became part of that? We're world? all part of that world. Uh -huh. It's just that we've got the veil, we've right. got the blind pulled down. So you, over. it's there. You, all opened, you, you were able to open the curtains, and Olga Park helped me greatly with that right. because she was able to share with me her experiences, and I never doubted for a moment that what she was sharing with me actually occurred, right. and that she had this relationship with Jesus, the way she talked about him, it was obvious. There were, and he, he, the messages that he spoke to her, which she shared with me, including some beautiful poetry, mm. some of which is in my book. Right, shared, right, shared yes, in the, by the vignettes as well. Yes. yes. Um, in the midst of the earth ariseth my kingdom after the fashion of the heavenly. That is the most beautiful wording. And it describes what's happening now. Uh, this is the reality. It is arising here in the midst of the earth. And uh, so it is here for all of us. Uh, all we have to do is have a little switch of perspective. Just a little willingness to set that unbelief, that doubt, that uncertainty to one side and then our true self, mm -hmm. our God self, mm -hmm. our Christ self, our higher being, mm -hmm. being with a capital B, mm -hmm. that is within us and that mm -hmm. is the reality of us all, can start to speak. That our true self has remained quiescent during the incarnation of most of us mm -hmm. because it doesn't barge in, it doesn't throw a charge at our door with a battering ram and saying, coming ready or not. Yeah. It waits with infinite patience until we're ready to start uh, that little chink of awareness that maybe there is something more mm. than what my bodily senses are mm. sharing mm. or showing me. And um, then our soul self or mm. the spirit of truth self within mm. us, what the Bible calls the Holy Spirit, mm. um, will begin to make itself known to us. Right. And all it requires is a little willingness and that willingness will come about as a result of an awakening desire rising up from our own within mm. a desire for something greater mm. some truth peace goodwill honesty openness trust all commodities mm. that are sorely lacking in today's world mm. and if we look at it only from the earth mind perspective getting more mm. scarce Mm. as fear mm. and doubt leaps in. It's interesting, isn't it? Because some people are saying that there is a, some people call it a new consciousness or a new energy coming onto the planet, right. which is creating, some also say, um, a greater love-like vibration yes. that is actually beginning to permeate us all in, in some yes. unknown way. Yes. Um, now this seems to be a parallel to what you're saying, if, if it's not yeah. the same thing from it a different the perspective. Same thing. It's the same thing, is it's it? Different, it's different perceptions or perspectives on the same thing. If we take reality as this enormous thing, yes. and we get one aspect of it, uh, that is part of the reality. Here's another, here's another, here's another. When we've all awakened to remembrance of the whole yes. truth, then we'll see the whole story. Right. But most of us are getting a bit of it here and a bit there. But that's all part of the plan and it's all fitting pieces of the jigsaw into place and gradually the bigger picture is emerging. Okay. It's just like doing a jigsaw. And whose plan is it? It is, uh, according to Jesus in A Course in Miracles, it is God's plan and he describes it as the at one moment in A Course in Miracles. And that that plan. What does that mean? Sorry. It is the word at one moment is an Anglo-Saxon term, mean, which means making at one, or restoring to a place of being at one, where there is oneness. We have the illusion of you sitting there and me sitting here. Right. So we're separate. In truth, we are one. In truth, the whole of humanity is one. We've forgotten that, and so we're at loggerheads. We're slaughtering each other wholesale and committing suicide because there's so much fear, so much doubt, so much uncertainty. 
but the, the uh, reality is that we are all at one. And as the bits of the jigsaw start getting put into place and creating the whole picture, mm. which is the one-month plan, which is being overseen by Jesus now, the final phase of the one-month, which began in linear time terms with what cosmologists call the Big Bang. Mm. Uh, and that was many billions of years ago. But linear time isn't real. We've made that up as well. It happened, there's only one moment and that's now. So the separation and the restoration to oneness all happened in one instant. Mm. We're just reliving it. It's like a film that was made 10 years ago or however long ago you want to think and we just keep watching the same film. And that's why history repeats itself, yes, uh, because we're seeing the whole, the same story over and over and over and over. We've got to wake up from that uh, dream, that cycle, mm, which mm, goes round mm. and round, what I call the carousel of birth and death. We've got to wake up from that to the eternity of our true being. But you say and we've got, got to wake up to it. I mean, it, I'm not quite clear what you're saying. On the one hand, there is this, if you like, external force, if we can call it that. I know that it's not easy to sort of get to sort of terms with it um, from, from, a, from a human perspective, but there is this force that is, you might say, imposing itself upon us, such as this new energy that's supposedly coming yes. in. And I think everyone's feeling it in, oh, yes. in, in different some ways. way. Yeah. But, you know, what about free will? What about you know, if it's being imposed upon us, what's happened to our free will? Does this mean everyone is going to have to change and become nice and loving and, <laughs> and, 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 and kind love, and generous? <laughs> you know, what's going to happen to all the greed? And, Wouldn't and, that be dreadful? Well, you know, <laughs> some people... But, but the point yes, is, want free will. you might be interfering with their free will. Yes, and that is not part of the Great Rescue Programme. The Great Rescue Programme honours free will and never interferes with it. Mm. Uh, but, uh, if God is a magnet and we are iron filings, those iron filings are free to be iron filings doing their own thing in their mm. own little space. But there is this pull, this great influence, this magnetic force which is gradually drawing those iron filings back to their source. Mm. And it is an irresistible force. Now one might say that is a breach of free will, but looking beyond that perspective, uh, the actuality is that we're being called back to where we actually belong, mm. to what we really are. We've experienced the free will and that will never be taken from us. We've experienced the, uh, the free will as separation. We're now at free will to return to our father's house, mm. just like the prodigal son, mm. and uh, when and that will only happen for us. Or not, or not, yes. and that will only happen for us individually mm. when we're ready. When we come to ourselves and say, "I've had enough of this." Okay, paper. yeah, I understand. This, this is think, no fun anymore. Yeah, I think there are quite a few of those around, aren't there? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh -huh. but there are. And the ego, which is this part of our mind, which is recalcitrant and bloody-minded, um, mm. that will resist and is resisting yes. and that causes conflict within our own mind. Mm. I want peace, I want truth, I want love, uh, all the things that are mm. my true inheritance, mm. but I'm having fun down here mm. and if only we can get past all the war and the greed and the lies and the cheating, uh, it's not so bad yes. here yes. and we're all free to stay in this what I call the carousel of birth and death, from one incarnation to the next, round and round and round, accruing karma from one uh, incarnation to the next. Um, but eventually, and it doesn't matter how long it takes, because mm. time is an illusion. Mm. If we, when we include the word time, that four-letter word in the equation, it messes up, messes with our head. If we leave the word time out of the equation, and recognize that there is only now, we can say, well, okay, it's great, let's yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah. And we only do this 
out of free will. It has to be our free choice. Mm -hmm. So free will, God gave us free will and he never takes back what he has given. He yes. is with us permanently. Uh, I see, wonderful. I'd like to come back to the ego, if I may. Mm -hmm. You've spoken a lot about Jesus. You've spoken perhaps less so about God. Right. Who or what is God for you? Well, God is the creator spirit, the source of all, um, our true being. Uh, Jesus describes the Son of God, which is who we all are, as being a thought in the mind of God. Mm. Now, a thought never leaves its source, so we're always in the mind of God. It can be extended, an idea can be extended, we can have an idea for making a widget. We make the widget and we sell it and we make a fortune and everybody's got one. But the idea has never left our mind. We all want love. We all spend most of our life seeking love. Mm. Some of us think we've found it. Mm. And we may to one extent or another. Mm. But the love that God is, is unconditional. It's perfect. I think people could probably understand and identify with God a lot more if they understood God is love, full yes. stop. Yes. The rest maybe is, you know, because the word has been distorted and, and, yes. and we've had all sorts of visions and, and conditioning about what God is or what yeah. he isn't. But, um, no, I just want God to, is to hear you articulate him. that. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the, the Bible also says, doesn't it, um, ye are gods, or Jesus said, ye are gods. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and that's true. That God is within us and we are within God. Mm. Jesus says this at the Last Supper. Mm. It's in John's Gospel. Mm. Most of us don't understand this mystical, mm. esoteric, arcane terminology. Mm. But we will. It is inevitable because that's who we are. It's part of our true being. Yeah. When we, when having pulled the blind down over our own sight, when we decide it's time to let that blind be raised up so that we can have sight of reality again, then we'll come to understand what all these terms mean. In the meantime, uh, it's a one step at a time exercise and Jesus has used that term to me and our other loved ones in the realms of light have said to me one step at a time and this is the way it has to be because there's so much to assimilate. Yeah. We, it's taken me 46 years to arrive at this place and um, I was a slow starter, a slow learner, mm, mm. but it was a very consolidating process. People want to rush. Rushing is of the ego. Rushing is saying we're getting, we're running out of time. We must hurry before it's too late. Well, there's no rush in eternity. It's all done. It's all accomplished. We're all at home. All we have to do is raise the blind and we'll remember, oh look, this is where I am. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> Let's go back to the ego just briefly um, mm. because Eckhart Tolle says something that I think is very interesting. He says that um, what's really happening is not so much an awakening but this, the release, if you like, of the ego is part of human evolution. We've been through a period of evolution mm -hmm. where we have become ego-driven, mm -hmm. mind-driven, and this was all part of the greater plan, he says. This was all part of God's greater plan, more or less. You know, I mean, yes. he may not attribute it to God. But when I, when, I, when I heard that, I thought, well, actually, this, this sounds plausible, that it is part of the evolution. And what's happening is that we're evolving away, if you like, from a mind-driven, ego-driven reality into something which is whatever the next thing is, which yes. is presumably non-mind, but not necessarily spiritual in the oneness sense. Yes. Do you, do you yeah. see what I mean? Absolutely. Um, well, what's your comment on that? Well, um, everything is part of God's plan, including what Eckhart said, what you've just quoted. Uh, it's, everything is encompassed within the great plan, uh, but it's only part of the plan. Mm. And if we see a part of the plan and say, that's the plan, yes. it's like having a slice of cake and saying, I've got the whole cake. It's only a slice of the cake. Yes, We've got part of it, and we can be fooled into believing that's the whole story. It's only one piece of the jigsaw. So what's the whole cake then? Well, when we, when we have assembled all the pieces of the jigsaw, to mix a few metaphors here, mm -hmm. 
uh, then we can see the big picture, the whole story, and realize that because we are in the place where we believe we are, this place called separation, three dimensions, uh, whatever, mortality, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of other bits to the story that we haven't yet fitted together. So we have to take one bit at a time. And when we've got enough of the bits, the, a bigger picture starts to emerge until eventually the whole story emerges. Now, I don't know anyone who's got the whole story more than Jesus. Mm. Jesus, as I understand it, is, and believe it, and is, this is my reality, uh, Jesus is uh, the one who first awakened to eternal reality and so is here to help his brethren in the sonship of God to remember who they are so that we can all be rejoined as one mm. in that sonship. And um, so in the, in the interim, uh, we're all partly doing our own thing. And that rejoinder of one, that will mean us all disappearing from 3D reality, yes. will it? Yes, I see. We made and no other theory. dimensional reality either. We'll just become one yes. amorphous, amorphous mass, as it were, like as the quantum physicists might tell us. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't use the term amorphous myself, but right. it, because it has loose, loose other term, connotations. Yeah. But nevertheless, that is substantially... The, the situation. Okay. And so. It doesn't uh, sound very attractive. It doesn't sound. Very <laughs> Not to my ego, anyway. No, <laughs> indeed. Indeed. And that's part of the resistance. Yes. We say, well, why should I give up my well paying job, my beautiful wife, my Bentley car, or all the stuff, my membership of the country club, whatever? Yeah. Uh, and um, so that is the resistance to a uh, true being. These are all appurtenances mm. devised to keep us in this belief that we're separate, that we're in time and place, that uh, we're mortal. Uh, none of it's true. And Jesus is the only one I know of. That, of course there are others. Uh, I'm quite sure that uh, Paramahansa Yogananda is mm. as awake. I know of a certainty that Gandhi is awake because I've experienced him mm. and wow when he touched his fingertips to mine it felt as if I had been connected to the national grid wow. the power in that man and the radiance the effulgence of his smile it's impossible to describe it it was so magnificent and he was here he was this close to me he never spoke a word but the look and the touch of the fingertips to fingertips told me it all. And anyone who says, gosh, isn't heaven going to be boring? <laughs> no, sir. It is not boring. <laughs> you know, right. it's completeness. Yeah. It's wholeness. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just bliss. Wonderful. None of the words really describe it. Yeah. Yeah. But when we experience it, yeah. we never want anything else. Yeah. Tell us about the joy. Tell us about your joy in your experiences, Brian. You know, look at the wonderful <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> As his eyes light up. Words. If only there were words. Joy. There are three, three words that are inextricably intertwined here. There is love, with a capital L, which is perfect, it, unconditional love. Got the love that is God. There is peace, which is also the peace of God, which passeth human understanding, uh, and there is joy. Now, if we have experienced love, joy is just there. When, once you've experienced it comes love, with, comes with the package. Love and yeah. joy are inextricable, and peace also. So those three terms are really one. Uh, there are three aspects of oneness. Mm. And joy, you know, when we fall in love with that beautiful girl that we thought was well beyond our reach, uh, we experience joy. And we think there's never been anything like it. Well, that is the teeniest taste of what joy really is. Mm. Eternal joy. Uninterruptible joy. You know, when that beautiful girl that we have a relationship with and then she jilts us for the guy down the street, 
that's the end of joy. We think our world has come to an end. Well, I tell you, this joy is never coming to an end. <laughs> that's the great joy of it. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, excellent. So, Brian, that's all I can say. Wonderful. What a great way to end. Thank you very, very much for sharing it's your passion pleasure. with us today. Amazing. And um, wow. Do have a look at the book if you get a chance, um, Seek Ye First the Kingdom. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned Yogananda because I think I read Yogananda's autobiography again recently and there are some similarities with your book. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so that's very interesting. You might find that interesting. One thing we haven't mentioned is your, your website and your, your diary, what well, I mentioned briefly in the introduction. Yes. If, if anyone is interested in reading some of the things that, um, uh, that Brian has written outside of the book, so to speak, then his website is honesttogoodness.org, is that right? And the two is the figure, the letter, sorry, the, the number two, so honest to, the other way around, goodness.org. Dot .uk. Um, dot .uk, right, dot .org, dot .uk. And, um, and you have a forum on there as well, don't you? There's a forum, there is um, a diary page where records of my communing with Jesus and the things that he has shared with me over the decades are all on there under a page entitled Diary of a Christ Communicant. And there are hundreds of thousands of words, thousands of records on there. Um, and uh, then there are my weekly articles, which I call Messages of Encouragement, which I email weekly to everyone on the mailing list. And those are then posted on the website as well, under Messages of Encouragement. Um, so there's, there's some good bedtime reading yeah, on there. absolutely. <laughs> and of course the point is that if someone has a question for you, arising, let's say, out of this interview or anything yeah. else, you know, they may read about you or hear about you, then they can ask that question on the forum. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Just email me. The email address is on the website. And um, I try to answer. In fact, I think I do answer every yeah. inquiry. But let's hope I'm not too inundated. <laughs> <laughs> you too many know. thousands more. You never know. <laughs> I'm, well, quite, I'm a slow typist. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to keep typing in acronyms. <laughs> yes, yes. Good idea. Once again, thank you very, very much, Brian. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Glenn. And, uh, it's my yeah, pleasure. Thanks, thanks so very much for joining me. Bless you for inviting me. You're very welcome. Thank you, Glenn. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this sharing your passion. Do have a look at Brian's web, uh, Brian's website. Easy for me to say um, when you get the chance. <laughs> And join me for the next Sharing Your Passion. Thank you very much for watching.